Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Hezekiah Walker. What's up, sir? Man, we have a guest today. A man who we've spoken about on Brilliant Idiots Podcast on numerous occasions. He's given us so many hilarious moments over the years. He's one of the best stand-up comics. When have the you business. ever? When have you ever? One of the one best, best stand-up stand comics, comics, comics alive. When are you ever? One of the best stand-up comics, best stand stand -up comics right. alive. The best stand-up comics Nobody alive. Nobody fucks with him on and, that stage. And I'm gonna tell you something else. One of the most naturally funny people alive. Naturally Ooh. funny people alive. I've seen him on Guy Code. He, he was a judge on Guy Court. Uh huh. People he, know him. From being Ashley straight. Larry He's on Chappelle's show. We don't know about that. Whoa, yet. whoa, whoa. We whoa, know, we, whoa, <laughs> know. Whoa. We, we've seen him as Ashley Larry on Chappelle's show, and he's got a fantastic Netflix special out right now. Oh, right it's a now. new day. Out right now. Donnell Rollins. Donnell yeah. Rollins. Yeah. 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 I really appreciate that. <laughs> that is the most honest. I, that, that, I know why you're full of shit. Because that is the most honest. Damn, that's the no, most, we can't even make can't it. take love. You don't know. Donnell just, cannot take why love. Why can't you take love? <laughs> I can't take love. Yo, Charlamagne, can you just tell him what you feel, how you feel I, about he him? He hears me all the time. And why, why is it so negative? Because he can't help it. That's just how he's wired. I don't know why. He wants to have this trauma. and He, <laughs> to, he wants people to think, oh, nobody likes me. You're hilarious, Donnell. Can, Donnell. Let me show you. Let I me love you. You can't lie about being hilarious. <laughs> I love you. got you, a whole Donnell. Netflix special. Everybody sees it. I feel it. like I'm getting jumped. <laughs> <laughs> All right? We're just saying I, feel I like, love no, you. No, y'all leaning up at the same time and everything. We, we love, we you. love you. you. We're leaning into the love. Now yeah, you lean into bro. it. I've. Uh, Can you lean back? I, I, <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, I, I, that's the old Donnell. The, the old Donnell was very sensitive. And I came here with a different attitude. And I want to show you love, too. And I bought you a gift. I bought you... A you're, gift. You're regifting. No, you're I gave you a gift. I'm, I gave you a gift. I'm about to embark <laughs> on one of the biggest tours in the country called the Black and Mild Tour. There you go. And I wanted to give you that. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. And also because I'm very, very mild. You're regifting. I just, I, I'm not you're re -gifting. Re -gifting. I gave him all of this I, stuff I, early. I, <laughs> you're re -gifting. I, this is you're re -gifting. Yo, yo, this I, is I just want to say. <laughs> this is yo, yo, I just want to say. You and a lot of people inspire me so much. And I, everyone knows I'm a fan, I'm a fan of mild sauce, right? So, uh, Peggy, <laughs> Peggy, You're I have a collabo idea because I want, a lot of people don't like things so spicy, Andrew. You know that, right? And it's the same as a black man to appeal to every culture. You want to keep it right in the middle. That's why I'm going to go on tour. Yeah. This is going to be a, one of okay. my mild... This is gonna be one of my sponsors. This is where you got into. You know, you got into a fight in Pennsylvania. I, I did. Yes. And but it doesn't. It doesn't stop here. Charlotte. But you didn't even think about that. Listen, I bought this. I for even you take it because you got into a fight in Pennsylvania and it's mild. This audience that has no idea what the fuck you're talking about. That's it. Because this comes out after All right, Club. There's another thing. And Andrew, I got to something too. Oh yes, please. This is more emotional. I, I got this is more fitting for where your life is right now. Oh, thank you very much. All right, it's a candle Beautiful. that I got. I would I would love a Donna Rawlings candle. That's not just that's a special one. And what is it? Has, what does it smell like, Donnell? Um, uh, you have to you have to do a sniff test and, and tell yourself. Oh wow! Oh. Di <laughs> Get the fuck out look, of here. Look, look. Dilf can. Oh, I thought it said Dilk. But what, wait, look what it says. Dick, I love fucking. <laughs> Why would you sell candy? That's almost kind of gay. I thought this was a place for truth. Gay is in, bro. I, I mean, gay, gay is, is in, but gay only if you want to be in the movies. Why, Why would you be in the sell movies? Dick, I love fucking candy? <laughs> that is so that's, awful. That's, that's so know. awful. It I says, this look, look. Up. Dick, I, this I love fucking. <laughs> Go close. What does it say? Oh, it, it doesn't say. Oh, I, was, I thought it was serious. It don't say. No, what does it say? No, it says dedicated, involved, love, fucking dick. Nah, nah. <laughs> dick, I'm not fucking. He got better. a problem with being emotional. He know he want to tear no, up. No, right this now. is beautiful. It says dedicated, involved, loving father, Dilf. And, and I we did Dilf that. Dilf, and baby. I started. I started saying that acronym. Everybody think it's uh, uh, that I like to fuck. 
and I even told you, I'm not gonna get emotion tell you say I care about you. But you know, first off, it was dope that you when you got married, you did it the right way. You got married, and yeah. then soon after that, you had a kid. And you did reach out. And, and you I said reached out. You were proud and I, I don't comment on too much of nothing, but, but I, I that, that meant a lot. That right. mean what did he say? What did he say? He reached out. He's like, this is the thing I'm most proud of you about, or most proud of you for. Dope. And that was far. And it, and you know, there was part of me who was like, we don't need to, you know, compare. You, know, you could be proud of me for everything. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm jealous. Dave, now we get into some honesty. 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 You know how hard it was for me to say that <laughs> shit, son? I was like this old cracker ass motherfucker. <laughs> and then I was like, and I was like this. White boys love this nigga, right? right. And then after that, I saw a 50 Cent tweet. I was like, this nigga got everybody now. I'm like, here in my community, stay over there with Taylor Smith, <laughs> stay over there with the Burt Crisis and shit. Give me the buttons and all them niggas. Next thing you know, this, I was like, oh, come on, it won't stop. But you was running out. But no, I gotta say, I'm proud of you. Thank you Fuck you, nigga. No, 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 no. I was on Geico too, nigga. What happened about <laughs> What you mean, what happened to your career? You have a great career. Cut it the fuck and out, Darnell. Like, and he did it the way, the fucking gay way. He went independent and did it all himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need it industry. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what? Fuck you, Netflix. I'll do it on my own. And Netflix, I'll, and Netflix I'll, had to circle back and still I, give him a special. Yo, and he wasn't even standing up. He was sitting down. Why are you sitting arguing, down! Why are you arguing with me? This is what I'm talking about. While a lot of people around here making excuses, here's an example of a Caucasian okay. white man that figured out how to work the system and not wait on Hollywood. He's not sitting but but he's not behind a desk talking about this person passed me, this person passed me. And this is what we need to do as comedians, everybody. Guess what he did? And this is a lesson for everybody. He bet on his fucking self. But what did he, he use? What did he use, Donnell? His platform. What, what was the platform? Charlotte it was a whole bunch of platforms. <laughs> no, what was the oh, platform? Oh, you guys, together. No. His really influential YouTube friends. YouTube and podcast. I never argued that. Oh, what are okay. you talking about? No, because you, you... Can you calm down? No, just earlier you said... Can you calm earlier, down? <laughs> you can no, down. You earlier, calm down. <laughs> earlier you made a statement and you said, you're just on YouTube and podcast. I have a Netflix special. That's what, what you said. What did I say it for? And who did I say it for? Corey Holcomb. All right, now, now we want to address it. The reason why, <laughs> oh nigga, nigga, you did it. I didn't, no, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't. Listen. Yo, he's, yo, he's the funniest, That's not the bro. same conversation. He might be the funniest, bro. He, yo, I'm telling he might you. might be the funniest. What I'm saying is, yo. that's a different conversation. You can't, <laughs> what I'm saying is, oh. Y'all want to address it? <laughs> y'all been talking about the last 10 minutes. Yo, all right, y'all want to address it? We can address it. But listen, but, but the, the honesty of it, like, <laughs> you can't use him as an example because he used that platform not to shit on people, mm -hmm. not to expose people, None of that shit. He used it to better himself and his brand. There is a difference. Yeah, but Donna, we're not about to sit here and do a Corey Hope for an I didn't hour. Say you brought his name up. No, I, you <laughs> asked me. Yo, I speak. You have a special I'm out like on I'm like a Netflix. rapper. I'm yeah, shooting shots. A new day. Subliminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know the nigga I'm talking about. You four foot two with a perm. You know <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say a nigga name. You know what I'm talking about out here reading books, 4,000 books, 4,000 yeah. books in a month. In a I see you out there meet me at the track. I erased you, nigga. Boy, boy. I didn't say nobody name. That's true. You did. I we, didn't say nobody name. You got name. no clue who you're talking about. Nobody None. knows what you're talking about. None what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the difference. Uh, all right? Okay. And the difference is, Let's talk about something else. But you, you, the, the same way Show. <laughs> nah, nah, because you Schultz, weren't around me. Nigga, I ain't no, let you do Schultz it. Schultz ran that circuit. You ran that circuit. You right. was, you had a podcast on the Joe Rogan's network. Yeah. yeah. What about it, though? What are you saying? I'm saying you was in that same network no, with this the Brett Chrysler. Not Brett Chrysler. What's his name? This is what. Brett Chrysler. This is what you said. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm sorry, Brett. Brett Chrysler. Brett Chrysler. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, this is what, no, what, what you said was. You, I didn't, I didn't speak down on a person with a YouTube or a podcast. I spoke down on a person that's trying, that tried to fuck with me. Okay. And in this situation, I would say this situation, that's what they do, right? That's what I they know, do. Let it go. Yo, how many movies do you need? Okay. Can well, you, the number is. Yeah, tell us the like amount clubs. of movies before you got to do gay things. Well, two I, movies. I've never done that. What, what the streets are saying. What are the streets saying? What's the streets, the streets are saying? saying Donnell. Like yeah. you go to a club as a two drink minimum, right? But in the <laughs> world, of movies, you go to if you go to a set, it's a three dick minimum. Wow. You know what I'm saying? 
That's what the streets are saying. So you have to have three dicks in you to do one movie? No, 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 no. <laughs> and we're going to keep this very heterosexual, right? Yeah. And why? I know the reason why <laughs> white people are very comfortable. Doing what? Um, Being gay? 100%. So are you. Or even borderline of, or even the thought of, they don't even care about you having the thought of it, whatever. But black people, it's a very sensitive issue. <laughs> and why is it so sensitive? I Nobody thinks answer. you're gay. You're a dad. You're a dad. Okay, what but the streets, the streets, what I'm saying is, they're going to say this, Andrew. Yeah. They're going to say this. And then you let the white boy head dick talk around you. They're going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but yo, some real Brooklyn niggas going to be mad that I let them speak you dick let around talk about me. Mad game Brooklyn niggas, yo. What? <laughs> It's mad know, gay it's, Brooklyn niggas. I know, I know man's is in them that suck dick. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know, you know, nigga, that's my man. Yo, you heard? My man's them, not them, Yeah, I know. Them <laughs> dumb niggas is getting it popping too. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, <laughs> but why do you think, why do you think just talking about cocks around you would make people... Damn! No, no. Yo. You look, you've you been look at the the same time. That, the fact, this is what I know, that you have crossed over. <laughs> And it's over. You're comfortable with it. Look, my sh- I'm still tight. That you is true. You're doing dick talking. He like this. He like, yeah, all right, so what's the yeah. problem with I that? Mean, he <laughs> talks about it more than me. I know. He and, loves talking about, about scorpion balls and shit, too. You want wet? I know. I got to... It's, it's, it's just a long story. That is crazy. Yeah, he had a story, and there was some guy got... Uh, uh, he got a, scorp- a scorpion bit his Tell balls. him the truth. The scorpion bit his balls. Tell him the truth. And then you went further to say, well, how big no. was his balls? Tell him the truth about the weekend you spent in jail in Pennsylvania. And it was the guy that was in the cell with oh, you who had the on, scorpion Donnell. tattoo on his, yeah. on his ball. <laughs> Tell Donnell, the truth. stop. Tell the truth, Donnell. Donnell, stop. Don't try, don't try to flip this on me. The streets Live are going to say that Charlemagne was talking about cocks. Live the truth, you. Donnell. The streets know Charlemagne talking about cocks. Okay, so it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So he doesn't Cox get judged movies. by that? For... I'm from South Carolina. No, but they just gave up. <laughs> what the is game that? They, you they, are a game cock. Go cocks, baby. Yeah, yeah. He loves cocks. No, what it is, they just gave up. That's my wife, I'm a martyr. The cocks. Go cocks. Yeah, yeah. They gave up. Who gave up? <laughs> the people that would get upset about it, they gave up on it because they know that you're not going to stop. Never. So they just gave up. With it. And do you so, think the same would happen to you if you just embraced the cock talk? I'm not embracing the cock talk. <laughs> yeah, but there's a... <laughs> I'm not a this. <laughs> These streets is on fire right now, son. So, wait, I've already why? been in three movies, nigga. I can't do it, son. I Before the podcast started, you said Palacio was on fire in these streets. You said streets. it's a new said black. The, I said you the, said dick sucking. What did you mean black. by that? I said the conversation, like every reference, everything that has to do with success or anything, people associate that with you having to, or somebody gave somebody Felatio, or Felatio was Felatio was involved with it. That's why I said. I, for the last for the last two weeks, every story, especially in our community, has had something to do with Felicia. No, no, I think it's just you. Stuff. Right. I, know, I think it's you. Who's doing this? I think it's you. I thought it was Chris. <laughs> yo, I'm like, yo, what? Chris is. I need some headphones. I need some headphones. I don't know what the fuck's going. Somebody set me up, man. It was you on Somebody TMZ. set me up. No, it was you on TMZ. Ah! <laughs> you went on the I didn't know anything about it. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Yeah. I'm minding my business. I see my guy Donnell Rollins on TMZ. Yep. I watch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Support. All I hear you say is, yo, you know, you, you suck more than three dicks, you've been in a movie. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is Donnell talking about? Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't understand it. Why? What do you think about this picture right here? <laughs> Do you think that that picture shows the relationship that Charlemagne and I have? Well, that picture shows that somebody's about to be in their third movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm not going to say which one. One of them is waiting for audition. That's what that shows. Somebody is like this. I got to get this role. Somebody is waiting. I don't know. So I, I don't know. Somebody's like, is this tender? is the one. Do you think that's too tender? Yeah, that's tender. That's borderline three movies. Why is that tender? That's love, Yeah, man. why can't two friends show tender? each other love? Are you serious? That's love. You don't see that. Un- you don't. A motherfucker is cupping Look how he your drinks head. water. Look how he drinks water. Look, ain't that a little gay? Just the <laughs> way he drinks that. water. He's cut. He's. Why well, you had to stand up just now? Yeah. Woody. Yeah. <laughs> Woody, huh? No, look. You had to adjust? Why look. Did you adjust? <laughs> your head is. on his belly. I had to look. Yeah. Your head is being cupped, son. Because we were reenacting the Michael B. Jordan, Jonathan Majors picture. Remember the picture we they took for excuses. Essence? We just wanted yeah, love. Yeah. And you were doing that, and then what was what was the feedback for that? So you wanted to follow that? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the suit you want to follow. Well, you mm-hmm. did a great job. Yeah. It looks very. It looks that's very. What, that's good. what satire is all about. Listen, Andrew Schultz went viral, right? I mean, he goes viral often. Yo, but free Meek, man. You, you got Stop upset. Stop bullying Meek. You, you got upset because you saw fifty posts about him. I didn't right? get upset. A shout out, Fifth. Yeah. 
what did you let's play the joke I want to know as a comic because you say comics shouldn't critique other I, comics but let's I, play I'll the joke what I felt when I first saw it today okay let's hear it let's play it for the audience we don't gotta play it this is so awkward watching your own joke <laughs> everybody, everybody here no it's not no it's not you, this is and he was in Philly let's set the stage yo you said this in Philadelphia I saw somebody say Andrew can is I set it up? Can I set, to let me do say, this in Philly let me say this and I said Andrew and Meek don't have the same audience <laughs> <laughs> Can I say this? Yes. All right, let's run. Can you rewind it? Okay. Rewind it. Okay. And me. I was, that's a crazy ass <laughs> shit. Me, me. Was, so look, at my, look at my hands. <laughs> look at the picture down there. I see it. <laughs> All right, back it up. Okay. Back it up. It's backed up. Back it up. Me, we're in the, we're in the locker room. Yeah. All right. And I got to show you something. What I noticed, a lot of people didn't see this when it first starts. Go all the way in the back. Press play. All the way to the beginning. Yeah, yeah press play. Press play. You'll be okay. good. Now, I'm going to tell you what it stops. Press play. Yeah. I was like, Meek Mills. Yes, it was. Stop it right here. Stop it right here. See that? That's an arena full with fans, right? From hard work. Oh, Not Jesus. fucking with nobody. Not saying you Andrew have to fucks with everybody. Let me say, you asked me to do it. I, I think, think he's doing thing, a subliminal. Thing, I think he's doing a sub thing you the see, subliminal thing. First again. thing you gotta see, this is an audience. This is a Hurl's Chicken Shop uh, Black Comedy Night. Okay, run to it. <laughs> I stop it right here. No, hold on, hold on. This is the funny part. I thought you don't like watching this. No, this is, well, this is the no, only part I like. Shout out to Meek, man. He's done a lot of amazing things in prison reform, right? He all them gay dudes out so he can suck their dicks. Now, this is what you just bought. He went too far. He went too far. All right, he went too far. We need them on the street so I can bust them cheeks. <laughs> that one, but listen. Yeah, yeah. All right, can I say what that I was saw? white privilege? <laughs> no, that Donnell, was... if you made that joke, every dream chaser in the world would be after you. <laughs> no, nah, look at look I at uh, but look at what Meek said. Meek laughed at the joke. No, Meek didn't just laugh. What he said? Meek added to the joke in a way that he don't even realize he added to the oh, joke. I saw you doing <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> no, but he had a great sense of humor. This is what we should be able to do: make fun of people. I'm and with you. Here's jokes. the thing. Here's the thing. When you watch this comic who's sitting right here. First off, <laughs> do you, first off, <laughs> it's easy. Let me say this. All right. It's easy to come. It's easy just to riff on topical things. It's certain things that come on and come out in the news, and you can just say Meek Mills, and everybody gonna laugh. But he took it beyond that. He took it to that to a structured joke yes. with a callback, with a punch, with a point. You know what I'm saying? That is fucking real comedy. Even when I first saw Thank it, you. I was like, Yo, for a motherfucker, and to be this, this. I don't know if you understand. This is hot on the news. You in front of thousands, thousands of people. Right here with this joke, you're taking a chance. Fresh out the oven, yeah. You, you, you're yeah. taking a chance. You didn't go to a club or anything. Like, I feel, I feel. But you're confident enough in yourself to say, I know this shit's funny. I'm going to stick to my guns. And I took a chance. Everybody's not fearless like that. And one thing I can say about your comedy is like, you have been through, I don't know what the equivalent of white people mud is. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what y'all mud is, it's right? More, it's more like sand. Yeah, it's, sand. It's, it's, it's a big sand yeah, in the Bermuda it's, it's, or something it's, like that. You know what I mean? I don't know what y'all mud is, but, but that's what I see with that. And then here's the thing. Um, if the only, you have to be able to respect a fucking good joke. No matter how hard it that's hits right. you, if the joke is good, it's a good motherfucking joke. If you laugh, that should be the criteria. And you I can't, think, you can't, I don't like people who laugh and then think about it after and then start feeling offended. No, if you laughed, that's what it was to begin with. And that's what I thought Meek did. That's why I was like, okay, leave this dude alone. Why is this going so crazy? Well, I'll give you an example. Give you, you, the you, reason Meek can't help himself. Look at that first line. What do you say? Read that first line. It's the first time I laughed at being gay. Okay. Like, God damn. He could have said being called gay. That's, he had to say that. Okay. There was nothing else to say. We know so. what he meant, Charlotte. I know, not, not, not at a time like this. <laughs> every word matters. Yes, every word matters. No, but it's funny. But just with the, like what you said, 
I, I understand that. And I had a similar, similar situation with my, with my special, right? Yeah. It is something like, when you do something like that, you wonder like, oh, these motherfuckers, you're not, it's not gonna stop you. But you wonder like, are they gonna be mad or whatever? Mm. And then in, somewhere in the side of you say, if the motherfucker got a sense of humor, he'll know he'll that laugh this at is it. fucking we'll funny. Back up, Taylor. Yes. I had a, when I, on, 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 on a new day, and I, I did a joke, I did a joke, I told a story about Dr. Umar. Right? Oh, that was funny. Oh. Yeah. And I was, all I kept on saying, I was like, this uh. motherfucker gonna come hard. Did I was like this. But I said I was very, I was very, like, uh, smart. I didn't go, and, and I, I can't bash him because a lot of things that he say are true. Yeah. It's just one little thing that I disagree with, yeah. with him on. I said that I was snow like... Snow bunnies? Yeah, the snow bunny joint. Right, I hops. Same. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Dr. Umar! <laughs> he, won't, he won't be swimming in the milk or anybody, anything like that. I hops. But, but the thing about it was, I was like, I, I was like, when I wrote the joke, when I wrote the joke, when I performed, I was like, man, I know this motherfucker's a serious brother, but I'm saying he got to understand funny is funny. And then it didn't take, I didn't, and I knew it wasn't gonna take too long. Maybe two days later, he reposted it. He reposted yeah. it, and I didn't even know that he reposted of him watching it, right? And this is why I know he had a sense of humor because. I did the serious stuff, 95, I did that. And you can hear him in the background say, oh, here it comes, here it comes. He knew the punch was gonna hit. I hit it, but I'll tell you one thing about his timeline. That's the most smiley faces he's seen on his timeline in like two years. Because it's funny. Funny yeah. is funny. Funny's gonna win. Yeah. Funny's gonna win. Now, this was crazy too. Meek said the first time I laughed at being gay. But then he said, but don't with me in real life. I may swing. LOL. I know what he means. Because I understand that language. He no, said I may no. swing a punch. What if you're no 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 <laughs> yes, it is. Oh! Yes, man. That's what I'm no! trying to tell you, man. No. Collins no. and grandma matters, Meek. Yo, no. Meek can no. no. This no. would have been no. a no. great... I was like this. Hold up. Wait, wait. Connell moved in four inches, he said. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Ah, pause, Meek. Pause. Yes, man. I, but I just assumed... To his point and to your point. Free me! At first I saw it, when I saw it, I made Free swing. Me, I bro. thought like swing. <laughs> he, that's what and he then, meant. No, he did mean he meant swing. That. But the top and the bottom of this tweet is gay, ironically. Top. Okay, but the LOL. The first, like, but the LOL, the LOL it's puts crazy. everything in perspective. No, it don't. Yes, it do. You don't put an LL on there, then it's a fight. Yo, if you don't put an LOL, I made to swing. do all this. Like, what if this was done on purpose and the LOL was to let you know it's a joke? This is genius. Yo, Meek might be a marketing genius. I mean, listen, we can't stop talking about Meek. Hey. That, that's the thing. Like, Meek knows how to use social media. Because personally, I'd have took Meek's phone away a long time ago. <laughs> Especially at a time like this. The best way to not feed into any sort of allegations about you when they're not true is don't respond to You know me. what he should have done? Don't say that's shit. That's a hard thing to do when you're a vocal. That's like, the hardest thing for me to do is not talk about who I don't want to talk about. I know, Donna. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you are perfectly aware. No, because I don't... You have shown us that this week. Yeah, but I, like, like... You should have seen him in Breakfast Club interview. He no. was like... He was like, and I know what you want to ask me. Like, nobody <laughs> what are you talking that. about? He was like, he was like yes. and what you mean comedians beefing? Nobody said anything about I it. I already knew yeah. what was coming. So. No, it wasn't. But it's, I know, okay, all right. Then, we no. want to talk about your special. You're right. Your so, successes. So the gifts you gave me... Was you want to talk about New Day? Listen. Why didn't you bring me? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga. You eight. <laughs> me eight. Just me, you want to talk about my special, no. nigga? And I knew you was going to do it because I heard the episode before this and you was talking and this nigga said, oh, I got something for him tomorrow. I heard you, son. I was like trying to get ready for you while you but was getting you ready was for on, me. You was on. I want to hear that no, shit, son. You New on Day Instagram. on Netflix right now. Go son, watch You kept calling yourself black and mild. I thought that I was genius. I was like, yo, that's genius. When you kept hashtagging black and mild, I'm like, that's what he's doing. He should own it. You're leaning in. You're leaning in. So I said, I'm going to rip so off the mild stuff. So you've had this fan base long enough that they believe everything to come out your fucking mouth? What do you mean? You think they believe this bullshit story? You, you said you it? were doing black and mild on, tw on I, Instagram. What I did was I flipped it. <laughs> yes. I flipped it. And I thought that was genius. And you know I flipped it to what? Okay, let's get to it. All right. <laughs> get to so, so, you know. So, so I just want to get to it. I just want to get to it. I just want to get to it. Get to what? And when a nigga do this, he gets to it. 
So, okay, let's get this correct. <laughs> so you knew the mild reference. Yes. yes. Oh, What's reference? On. Let's get silence just because I want to understand. Come on, sir. So you knew <laughs> oh, the mild, God. black and mild reference I was using was basically turning lemons into lemonade out yes. of the situation, yes. right? And you know the situation was triggering to me. I didn't know it was that triggering. You didn't know it was triggering. Let's just talk. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm your therapist right now. Let's just talk. Let's just talk. Let's just okay. talk. Okay. Okay. You knew it's triggering to me. You knew it's triggering me. You know I'm sensitive. We've had experience. Yes, yes. Everywhere I go, people like, they say, why do you let him do that? And I, you're all right with me. But for the streets, I had to say, man, fuck that South Carolina here. <laughs> That's what I say, because I don't want them to think that there's any chance of us having text messages outside of that. So, knowing... <laughs> Yeah, yes. you, I'm a sensitive person. You know the things that irk me. You did it for seven years. You knew what my trigger word was. <laughs> you knew what my trigger word I didn't was. know mild was such a trigger word. It wasn't. Until it was. Until it was. <laughs> okay, I you knew that. not funny was my trigger word. Nobody what? said you wasn't funny. Earlier on. Earlier on, <laughs> who? Nobody said you. That. I've never no, said no, no, that. No, no, no. Do ever I have to? Yes. Do, do, Rewind who? all the tapes. I will, please, please. Nobody said please, you. You never heard please. me say that. In fact, I said the opposite. I said I saw Donnell Rollins at Radio after, City after. with Dave Chappelle, Cedric Entertainer, Marlon Wayans, and I said Donnell was the funniest person on the stage. That all night. right, we're producers. Just do this for me. <laughs> Just go rewind when they. Why try would I ever say you're not funny? Because you were trying to trigger me. No. Listen, that I'm, never happened. Listen, this is how calm I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to explain. So you know that I said the black and mouth to respond to a certain thing and what I thought was a classy way. You know what my trigger words are. You know deep down inside that upsets me to be called mild. You saw me flip out on TMZ. So with that said, you know it's a trigger. You decided to either DoorDash or Instacart an Easter basket filled with everything that said mild on it. What y'all don't know is this is the bully that y'all don't know. Is that fuck, true? Yo, I don't fuck that therapist. <laughs> Get a new one. You know that this was going to trigger me. No, I didn't. You you said you loved the green mild sauce I got you. That brand. You didn't know I loved it until you triggered me. <laughs> you didn't know that. So just stop with the shenanigans. Listen, you know what's so funny about the word mild? You're reacting to the word mild the way women first reacted to Little Duval calling them basic. Mm. Mm. But see, he was calling basic bitches. He was calling basic bitches basic bitches. Yes. I'm not a mild comedian. You know that, though. The same way Meek knows he's not gay. But I still can respond to it. You can. I know you're good friends of Michelle Obama. She says when they go high, we go low. All right? <laughs> I don't know Michelle. What, 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 you're I, good I know. friends with Michelle no. Obama? No. Well, you know she's a... You, you know her. You uh, know you've her? You've met her. Yeah, I met Michelle a couple of times. And the question, when you met her, how did you smile? How did I smile when I met I'm gonna Michelle? I'm going to show you the look you did. <laughs> show me. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> I actually was shocked she knew who I was yeah. when I met her. Everybody yeah. knows who you are. And I said, what do I call you? First lady, you whatever, whatever she everybody said. Everybody knows who you are. So you... What'd she say? Everybody knows who you are, Charlotte. <laughs> <Relax. laughs> I don't want to say what she said. You're responsible. What people know, you're responsible for the things that you say. Yes. And like when you give me... You know how many niggas is ready to get busy in these streets? And then when you say... you what give you me mean? A, like busy? Like... like like have fuck, sex fuck, with fuck. each other? Like, that's like crazy. freaky Zeke. Like, like the fingy? niggas over here. Freaky Zeke? Like, what you mean? Like, free? <laughs> what the fuck? It was the niggas. You, hold on. What's, no. Are you niggas in the street? Guys guys in the street? In the no. <laughs> freaky, freaky say, the niggas over there with the hammers. Who oh, freaky? Hey, yo. <laughs> yo. What's going on, was, Donnell? So I put, You're spiraling. This I put, is crazy. Yo, You're spiraling. This is crazy. I put... It was two days. I put one nigga in, in the four Nelson. It was you, wow. Right? And I was From blocking the back. it. And then niggas over here was shooting, right? And then I was blocking Show it. Me. And then yeah. it was two niggas over there with the with the with the with the with the with the, with the, with the ratchets. No, say they, you wanna was, say hammers. It was two over there with the hammers, and they got the hammers, and then the other they got the hammer, and then I pulled out the hammer, and they had hammers, That's and I orgy. said. That does seem this like... This is a wild it orgy, does seem like an orgy, shit bro. crazy. It I'm, does seem like an orgy. <laughs> it does. What I'm crazy. saying is, yeah. you have a responsibility. Right. You know that you were going to trigger me. Yeah. I did you not. Have, yes, you did. 
a whole Easter basket filled with mouse. I gave you shit. a gift because you got a special out. <laughs> this is crazy. Well, this year started off <laughs> so, <laughs> the year of the truth, right? It does not feel truthful in here right now. <laughs> what do you mean? Because he's lying. But this is he lying about thinking you're funny? Because I've never okay, once okay. heard him say that you weren't one of the ever. funniest comedians alive. Okay, I, I genuinely have not ever once he heard He can't okay. accept love. <laughs> Donnell thrives off thinking that people don't fuck with him, don't you guys like have, him. You guys have your inside jokes for sure, but um, he's never once not said that. He said ever. that you're one of the funniest human beings alive. Ever. That's facts. He said that after, and I knew what was going to happen, after... He saw me eat the audience up. And this is how it hey, started. Yo. This is how it started. Yo, yo, that was you crazy. No meal. No meal. No meal. No No meal. That was nuts. Eat them up. Eat the audience up. You guys just eat them up. My God. Y'all eat them up. You ain't give a fuck about who was in there either. It was men, women. You were just going to eat them the fuck up. Days. You were going to go crazy. Was the audience member that you ate up male or female? The sensitivity of you guys' ears when it comes to gay shit. We got gay ears. We got gay ears. This is yeah. a gay ear room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is better than a gay butt. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? See, my ears ain't gay. I don't even know what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's why the niggas hit the Not streets, son. Yeah. When what? you was younger, when you was younger, did people... Why you, now you're going to trigger me. No, did, did people tell you they was proud of you? Did people give no. you encouragement? Damn. The reason why, because I never... The reason why... I'm not saying they was... The reason why, because I didn't do anything for them to be proud of. Nothing? When I was younger, I know I was a troublemaker. Now, I wasn't like, yo, we proud you made the basketball team. I was the water boy. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't proud. And then they didn't know I was going to be a comedian. Niggas said that you funny as shit. But they, they never said, we're proud that we can come get you out the, la out the uh, lunchroom mm -hmm. and roast. Like, when it was time to fight, they never came to get me for fights. Mm -hmm. But when it was time to roast, they was like, go get that little big head nigga. Yeah, we yeah, got him. Yeah, yeah. But nobody, I, I don't, I think. Is that when you felt appreciated? I didn't pre feel appreciated in high school. I didn't feel, I didn't, that was nothing to, to be proud of me for. My mom always is proud of me. That's good. What she said? said? Follow your dream. Well, follow your dreams. But. I think, I know this is crazy, but uh, the first time I felt somebody, people being proud of me is when I joined the military. Okay. You know, and they were like, we're proud that you served. Proud that you But they tell us. everybody that, though. I know, but I was like this. <laughs> and, when, and when I, they were. <laughs> no, it is. Yo, but I, the I, first I, time I felt someone was proud of me in my life. <laughs> Was being a military. And you just cut the legs no, right there. No, I didn't mean it like that. Well, he's, not, he's not a triggering motherfucker. This guy. No, I didn't mean it like that. You're not a trigger. Look at that. That's, a, that's young Donnell in the Air Force. Because yep. what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is why can't you just accept love? Were you a um I just said, a red tail or whatever? No, I was what? a military police. I was oh, police, okay. yeah. No, I can't. You look wild young in that photo, yo. Yo, I was. How old are you there? I was right there, I was 17. I was so, when I went, I was so stationed. You be 18 and be in the military? Yeah, unless your mother. I literally had to get a permission slip from my mother to join get the here. military. You can't, you have to be 18, but if you're under 18, your mom has to sign for you. Mm. And that picture right there, I was I was 17. The first base I was at was Kunsan, Korea. That picture over to the left, right there with me in that CJ5 Jeep. I was 18, oh, and people really? thought people thought I was a uh, the, a general's son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they thought I was a dependent. They didn't think I was in the military. The Koreans used to call me Eggy Eye. Eggy Eye is that? Korean for baby. <laughs> I called. They shouldn't be talking about nobody's eyes. I say Eggy Eye. Yeah, that's, that's, right? that's crazy. Nuna, I go Nuna, I do ba. I go hapshida ken chena yo. Yoba seyo, yoba seyo, yoba seyo iriwa. Money upso karachogi, money iso hapshida. Translate, a, Chris. <laughs> no, Chris, Yo, Asian, he went, that's racist, son. <laughs> no, he is. You didn't know what Asian he was, though, nigga. Oh, you're right. <laughs> no, he is. Is this Korean? Are you Korean? Yeah, he's Korean, yeah. No, Korean? No, Taiwanese. That's oh, racist. Taiwanese, damn, my fault. And I, you said he Asian, so he should speak Korean? Yeah. I didn't know what that's Ray Cancel this show right now, son. <laughs> you just said. I'm just dumb. You say he's I like, Korean, I like so I. That's you said. Stupid. What were you, you saying? Said, <laughs> you said he's Korean, so I know he could cook Chinese food. That's what I heard. I never said that. That's what the same thing. can do it. Yo, Baseo, yo, Baseo, yo, Baseo, you are. Yo, yo, come here, come here. Yo, Baseo, yo, Baseo, yo, Baseo, you are. Yo, come here. Money upso, kadachogi. You ain't got no money, beat it. Money That's what that means? Listen. Yo, Baseo, yo, Baseo, yo, Baseo, come here. Yo, come here. Yo, Baseo, you are. Money 
Oops, so you ain't got no money. Kata chogi, get the fuck out of here. Money is so hop she da. That was the that was the theme song for the horse downtown. Got you. What you does that mean? Though? I just told you. It means that you ain't got no money. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you gotta say all that for that one sentence. Yeah. I go mung chungi. They got tok tok ke arso. Wait, do you speak fucking Korean? Hung on my low choke him. That's I speak a little Korean. Hung on my low choke him. He probably just bullshit. And we don't know. I go. I go. Shikra. Shikra. Iptakcha. Shikra is be quiet. I would talk to you like that. You have respect. Iptakcha. Just shut up. That's to you. Iptakcha. Don't say yaima. Like if I don't have beef with you, I'd be like yaima. You know what about? And then I would tell you to get away from me. Any Korean looking at me right now, they'd be like, this is their father. Yaima. You know what about? Yaishi. Cuss them out. Like, got a choke. How did you guys get on cameo on Fresh Off the Boat? This is great. Yo, you don't even know what the next move I'm about to make. I'm, I'm going to manifest it right here, and this is going to happen. My next special, I'm going to do in Korea. I have a story. I like that. I have a story that nobody can fuck with. So somebody said something to me earlier today, right? They said they were talking about joke thieves and these people that steal jokes and stuff like that. And I always thought like this. If a motherfucker steal a joke, don't bitch about it. Either beat them up or leave it alone. Mm. Write another joke. Mm. And if you really think about it, Schultz, you, if you really think about it, you're a comedian around the circuit. When a lot of times we hear these stories about somebody stole a joke, it, it's not, it's a joke that could easily be stolen. It's a premise that... Stole, stolen, stolen or thought of. Thought of. Parallel that's thought. Mm-hmm. Thought, yeah. It's like... I think that's what the internet has showed us is that like... You're not the only one capable of having an idea. You, your original idea, there might be someone else with it. Right. Someone else's original idea, there might be someone else. This happens all the time on Twitter. Somebody says a funny nickname for somebody. Right. And then 10 other people in the comments right. also say the nickname. Right. So it's possible it for... Is so, I look yeah. at it like this. As a person, and, and even this idea, as a person, even with my special, when we did it the first time, Dave canned it. Mm. The first time I did, I did it two I, years. I remember watching you talk about this. Yeah, he canned it. Because he thought it was mild. He you know didn't think, you know what? To be honest, you know what? Whatever definition that is, maybe he thought it was mild, but this mm. was his reason why. I got a stand and no. I ripped the room. Stand late, they going crazy and shit. And, and, and this was at the heels of the pandemic. I didn't have no place to work out. Usually when you do a special, you running just lines. I was doing, I was working out in the goddamn cornfield. 10 or 15 I minutes. thought those days were over. What? No, they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh shit. You got me. <laughs> oh, oh, Let me find out. You said it's oh. sincere, too. Yeah, they, they are. are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Let me find out Dave got y'all working yeah. in the cornfield. That's how I felt like it. Sweet Lord, sweet Jerry. No, no, no. What song you coming out to? Come and take me on. What's your walk on music? I know one day. This is fantastic, Come and take bro. me on. You went from fucking Korean to slave like that. I didn't know you had all these gifts. Multi-talented. So the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the first time, the first time, we had already, we had announced that we were going to put the special out. Day, uh, Earthquake had one. I had one. They went to Variety. Dave was producing this whole thing. I remember seeing this shit, yeah. right? And then he called me, and like, and I was like, damn, when are you going to fucking watch it? Like, when are you going to watch it? He was busy. Then he called me one day. I was in Baltimore. I remember it. He said, yo, D. I said, what? Well, he said, man, I'm in editing right now. I'm like, this show, we about to go. I was like, you finally made it to edit. He said, he said, I want to do it again. You know that's the most insulting thing you can say to a comic because the first thing you say is, was it not funny? That's yeah. the first thing. Yeah. You ain't talking about lighting or nothing. you like, what you trying to say? Yeah. Did I hit it? And I, and I said, how did I? How do we go from being excited to you want to do it again? And he said, Donnell, you're one of the funniest comedians I know. He said, I could put you in front of any room and you will destroy the room. Yeah. He said, but that doesn't make it a great special. Mm. He said, if we're going to get this right, he said, out of everybody that's in that lineup, he said, and no slight to Lunell, no slight to Earthquake or Tony West, he said, Dude, I'm that associated with the brand, he said, yeah. mine is the most anticipated. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, so he said, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Yeah. And then I was like, I need to have more information. And then he was like, listen, you did a lot of COVID jokes. I, I think that's a smart decision. It was a smart. Yeah. Very smart. You know, and I, and then I. But, there, it's old. It's dated. It's like. But I'm yeah. thinking, but you got to think about it like this. 
I'm in the moment. Mm. I shot that in the moment. I wasn't thinking of the future. Yeah. I shot that like, what's popping right now? But it was a good decision by him to recognize that like culture has moved on. Absolutely. So yeah. we're still talking about these old jokes. It might not be as well received as it would be if it came out two weeks after if the film. If I would have dropped it, say, dropped it then, when you think you see a mask, your brain immediately goes to 2020. I, which is maybe not the best time for you. Especially right. if you think four about, years later. I think this is a, a fantastic decision, and it's a fucking costly decision. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Like that. Yo, Jeff Ross said it to me. He was like, you doing it again? That's unheard of. And the thing about it that was- That shows how much Dave believes in you. 100%. So we said we're going to sure. try. We said we're going to try to do it again, right? So it's just a random situation. He records. It's just like he records all his sets. Yep. So we were doing some shows in Napa Valley, and Ricky Hughes was in the room. Shout out to Ricky Hughes, one of the dopest producers, Grammy Award winner, Emmy, Ricky. whatever. She's dope. So we're in the back. It's just me, Dave, and Ricky. And, and Dave said, Ricky, how many cameras do we have here tonight? Uh, and Ricky said, we got five cameras. Dave looks at me. He says, you want to shoot your special? I said, when? He said, tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. Anybody else would be like, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, first off, I need a suit and I need red socks, right? That was going to be my thing, right? But I got excited about it. You still got on the same socks right now. And I got plenty of them. That's my new thing. I'm going to sell them, too. So, um, so got, uh, get a chance to do it again. Go up there. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Are you doing an hour regularly? Now? No, not now, like at that time. Or were you no. doing... So how do you put together the hour? I'm going to tell you. Very good question. The People I, don't realize that. Like, this is another thing. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you're asking a real honest question. Yeah. And I used to... Like, I'm going for an hour on a special, right? But I have nowhere to practice an hour. Yeah, you're probably think about doing, it. what, 30 or so? Or 25? Not even that. Yeah. Think about it. And this is where I was practicing this, Schultz, in the, in, the, in the back of pickup trucks. Think about it. During the pandemic... What year is this? This was 2020. Oh, so you're talking about the first special Yeah, still. the first okay, special. Okay, okay, What I'm saying is, I, I had no place to do a whole hour. So what I did was, I would go to places, and I'm, I, I said, I'm going to do 15-minute sets. So you'd break it up. I'm going I'm to piece it together. Yeah. And I said, when I used to... And then I, I was like, okay, I'm doing 15 here. That's going to be that. What's going to be my transition to go to the next thing? All I got to do is sew it together. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I do 15, 15, 15. So that's how I was practicing. And then once I, once cl clubs started opening up where I did, uh, I, um, I could do an hour, I kept telling them to give me three 15-minute lights. I wanted to know exactly where I was in the hour, in yeah, the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Because the contract for these shows that we were doing, they was only supposed to be a half hour. Yeah. These specials, it's supposed to be, the, the money I got for a half hour, you would not believe, believe for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was only supposed to be for a half hour. But... Another thing, and this was a Robbie Prawd. Robbie yeah. Prawd and Dave thought differently. If you don't yeah. know Robbie Prawd, he's the guy. Robbie Prawd, the biggest name. And, and he greenlights all the specials for right. Netflix. He so runs he the knew comedy he was going for 30. Yeah. Dave was adamant about, just keep it 30. He said, I want to be an intro card. He said, I want to keep it nice and sweet. Yeah. I can't argue with it because he got me our money for 30 minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for a nigga just coming out. But not really that social media heat and all yeah. that. that yeah. I got a nice bag. I got a nice bag for yeah. it. I'm glad you learned that. You get a lot of bags. So <laughs> I got a uh, damn. What else? I lost, I was to... So, you, so, so you, you're making this decision it. between 30 and an I'm hour. glad you didn't deny that you get a lot of bags. No, no. So, <laughs> I saw his glasses fog up when you said that. So, so <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy that you didn't thing. deny it. You didn't even deny it. The thing that, and the way we were. I hate liars. <laughs> where we. Um, uh, so you have to make a decision between 30 and an hour. Dave is like, hey, why don't you do something 30 tight, sweet, a missile. He was It'll telling be an introduction. Me, he was, exactly. He was yeah. telling me, all we need is 27. He was like, but I was like, nah, when you think of the idea, especially think hour. I, I, I but, don't know. I, I understand where he's coming from, which is like, give them an introduction where they're begging for more. Right. So I, I like that logic, but with you, I would say you're different than the average comic in that a lot of these people already have seen you That's do comedy, right. already know That's who right. you are. So it's maybe not an introduction, but I do like his logic. It's a combination is, of both. Yes. And then, but the thing is, Dave wanted, he, he wanted 30. And Robbie was like, Robbie wanted 40. And the reason why Robbie wanted 40, because you, it's a certain, you got to do at least 40 minutes for you to be able to chart. Uh, yeah. You so if, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to you want to get the exposure from the episode, the, not the episode, from the the special doing really well for right. debut number, number one on. Yeah, but, but here's fire. the thing: 
And I understand, like, it was like, it's, it wasn't a conflict. We all figured out a way to make each other happy. Yeah. Like, what Dave's, uh, Dave was more like, fuck that, I wanted to be funny. Like, even if I would've came up many short, if it was everything we had, everything we had, we, we, he, he was gonna keep like that. I think that. that's the smart decision. But he was at, the thing was, this is like, when it comes, uh, this story is so dope. So we were at 30 minutes, 38 minutes, and it was fire. Right, it was a clean. I think I did 42 that night, 40, 44 that night. We was we 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 the first pass. We turned it 38 minutes, and then Robbie's like, "Is it 40 minutes?" And I said, "Dave went for Rob. Dave was basically like, fuck the 40 minutes." And Robbie's like, Ugh. "Right." So I asked Ricky. I was like, "Damn, man," because I knew it was a clean edit. I was like, "Do we take anything out?" I said, "Is there anything we could put in?" And this was a long shot, and she said, "Well, we took out the missile missile philothelioma your joke." Meso it's a missile, that shit. It's a it's a joke about that late night medicine or whatever, right? Okay. And the reason, here's the thing, and going back to the similar premises, I took that joke out because I was just scouring the internet and then uh, uh, a joke Cat Williams did popped up. Okay. When he was talking about missile. <laughs> That's what I wanted to avoid, even that conversation, right? Yeah. The fact, because it was so hot in the streets with Cat, I was like, man, I don't even want... People, oh, now he's still in jokes or whatever. And I knew that his joke and my joke were totally different. Yeah. But when I knew, she was like, we can put it back in. And then I say, you know what? Fuck Cat Williams. I'm putting that shit back in. Right? Yeah. It but if they're different jokes, what does it matter? The shit was so hot in the streets, Schultz. Uh, I didn't even want to. Like I, the topic was so synonymous. With, I'm not familiar well, with Cat, Cat's Cat, Cat was so hot in the streets is what he yeah, said. Yeah, it was so uh, hot. And, and, and Cat had started the conversation about people stealing jokes and yada, right. yada. Right, and then uh, I didn't, I didn't, because didn't, it was right in the heat of that, and we in editing. Yeah. I was thinking, I was like, I just don't, I said, my shit is, and what I said was, do I lose anything in the joke? If I take it off, I didn't lose anything. The joke still hit, but I said, put it back in, put it back in, got us to 41. 41 got us to be able to chart. That number. And then yeah, you were number two. Well, when we stayed amazing. in, like, and that's a big accomplishment. Huge. To like two, four, seven. It's also how a lot of people end up seeing things. They just see the top 10 that. and then they click it. Yeah. He was yeah. number two. He's yeah. top 10 now. But why you just didn't do like a longer intro or something? Because you did like a sketch in the beginning. It's like, yeah, but but that's what's, it's, that's real funny. I don't know what time that, I wanted to get straight to it. Even, even. I like the, that. I, I think that. Getting right into the stand-up, like when people click something, they click for stand-up. And I think a lot of times comics try to be cute and they put like a sketch or something in the beginning of their show and it's like... Did you see my, did you see the special? No, I haven't seen did it. Did you see yet. the intro? No. I guarantee you. Yeah. When you see the intro... It wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad intro though. It, like I, I get what you're saying. Like to me, I'm, I'm the same way. I want to get right to it, but it made sense for what he was but doing. But here's the thing. Donnell's a known entity. Like yeah. I, I don't think, I think there's very few people that are unaware of you that know about stand-up comedy. If you're a brand new comic and they're already taking a risk, get right into the stand-up. Right. If you're Dave, you could put a sketch. They actually know you from sketch. Like, they know Donnell sketch. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're Donnell, you're Dave. There's people, of if Chris Rock can do something in the beginning, Kev can do something in the beginning, because people are like, I'm going to stay through this no matter what. If you're a brand new person, I'm like, let's go right to the job. Did you ever think about do <clears throat> revising the Ashley Liar character for the special? Like uh, have him introduce no, you? No, but I would because I kind of want to disassociate myself with that. You know what I'm saying? But it's you like, went from Ashy to Classy, though. Yeah, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. You're tired of Ashy Larry, is what you're saying? No, it's not that. I still, he still gets people to come to see me or whatever. Why do you talk about him like he's another person? He is. Has Dave ever told you he's proud of you, Donna? Yeah, he said all the time. How did that make you feel? It made me feel like fuck Corey Holcomb. <laughs> yes. You ask me, bills, yo, man. no, let's why? pay some why? bills. Why? 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 Let's pay some Leave bills. Corey alone. Yo, let's why can't you and Corey get along? God, yeah. Damn. I want yeah. Corey. Let's talk about him when we come back. Yeah. Pay some yeah. bills when we come back and we talk yeah. about it. Leave Corey Holcomb alone. Wait, man. wait, before you go pay the bill. Well, look you can this, show him look, why you playing. This, playing no, I want him his reaction. Oh, you want his reaction? Yeah, look, Jack. Please act like you don't like it. Just for me. This was rough, you know that. Oh, great song. It's an expensive song to license. Hello. That's. This new dog. Come on, sir. Boom. 
Night night. Night night. Night night. Yeah, it's really cool. Night night. I mean, you got it. You got it. Organic and it wasn't long out of me and with, your like, kid, with your kid. And then and like, you know production. Yeah, you heard that's an song. expensive. I used to come out racks. to the uh, yeah 60, 60 grand for that. Dang. I used to come out to the Michael Bublé version, the white version. Oh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but but uh, but uh, it's just an amazing like the it, feel. Right, that's a Nina Simone, right? Nina Simone. Oh, I told people the comedy is very subjective. That's great. That's great. Of like you like a certain type of comic. Some you like, and I said I'm not getting caught up in like, is it the funniest thing? I didn't. You I didn't wanted try to, to make him. You started to make him feel. Hey, yeah, I'm interested. Thing, I'm a human thing, being. This is my I life. I wanted with this shows yeah. was I wanted to feel good. Yeah. The special, and I was like, even with that, the song, it, and the, I'm the song, and I was like, when we did this, people like, did Dave tell you to do this and everything? Dave told me with this, focus on your jokes. You get that ready. He said, let me do the bells and whistles, right? Because I was trying to think of an intro, and I was jammed. Hmm. The shit I was thinking, it wasn't, it wasn't clicking. Hmm. And I'm really thankful for him because. And we was we had a deadline to hit. We either got to do. We had two days to get the intro right. Or we was gonna blow. It. Uh, Robbie already had a slot for me. He was gonna <laughs> blow who? Well, he was gonna. Blow, you know what I'm saying? We was gonna. You should correct yourself on that. Right, you should. For the streets. Okay. Oh, I, streets. You know I know street. what you're talking you know about. I, I do too. I know what you're talking about because I'm, I'm. But I have gay ears, and so does Charlamagne. Yes. And they, other people might hear you saying "blow Rob." That's Robbie, what you said. You said you want to blow the guy. What? With green lights to stand up yeah. at Netflix. That sounded what? crazy. That's what it sounded like. Okay, and that's not what it was. Yeah. So we had blow the deadline. Yeah. yeah speak fast. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. had two days. We had to get it, and I couldn't think of anything. I'm like. Man, it's special. I'm telling you, I'm like, man, it's special. It's going to never come out. He was like, we need to push the date. I was like, man, fuck that. Robbie Pro said, we got February 27th. We're going to get that. We had two days. I couldn't think of anything. He came up with this idea, right? He came up with this idea, and I thought it was genius. And it was so, for somebody, this is when you know somebody knows you. When he's, I said, that was so genius. Dave. He was like, genius. He said, that's you, nigga. Hmm. He's, he's white like, or black? What? Robbie. Robbie Pro, white guy. So why would he call you a nigga? No. It's part of the deal. I'm talking to Dave. Oh, Dave, okay. I okay. said, no, I said. Oh, so Dave came up with the intro? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Dave said it. I was like, nigga, that was genius. And then Dave said, that was you. He's, and I'm like, yeah, but I didn't know you ever took time to see and feel what I appreciate. Mm. You don't think Dave saw you all no, these years? No, no. It was a lot of things that he put with that. The part of ripping the stage, he knows I care about. We've been on the road. When everybody went a while, I'm looking at kids of my son, pictures of my son. Yeah. The fact that you had the vision oh, to see got you, got you, that, got you. you know what? And even with the song, he said, it's you, D. Yeah. He said, it's special. He said, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. You waking up. And when somebody clicks on that, you don't know if you're going to get a documentary or, or a movie. But to be quite honest, that was what I am. When I go to sleep... Think about my kid, the first thing I think of. Yeah. When I wash my face, when I go to work, when I go rip the stage or whatever, I'm doing it for him. But for him to see that under the gun of a of a of a of a deadline, yeah. and then to put it there, and that was kind of like the final piece to it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. everybody so, well, can see you're a great father, though, Donnell. Yeah. Like, yeah, like we see that on social media. And we see that it's important to you to be a great father. I just don't know how to say this, Charlemagne. What? I don't trust your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. I don't. You I, don't know how to take compliments. You don't know how to take love. Yo, you fuck with me <laughs> all the time. We fuck with each other. No, we don't. Yes, we do. On your other punk ass show, you made the audience and you take weeks to come up with these diabolical schemes. <laughs> what you do? What Yo, you do? And I can imagine him on set like this. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he, this is what he did. This is what the fuck he did. And I got the receipts. Okay, go. We do an intro. Somebody lost their Josh. R.I.P. Tiffany, uh, in that, but not, not for life, but for the show. You got her fired that night. Tiffany Cross. I did not get Tiffany Cross. Yes, you did. You set her up. True. You let her talk about Tiffany Florida. got the Native Land Podcast, Reason Choice Media, iHeart right now. Her, Andrew Gillum, Angela Rye, subscribe to that. Andrew Gillum? Yeah. Speaking of. Can I tell my story? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I tell a story? So I'm on the set. <laughs> Dreams and nightmares. <laughs> He's got a story to tell. <laughs> Can I tell my story? Yeah, yeah, yeah go please ahead, go tell ahead. your story. So this is me in a different environment away from the 
Breakfast Club. Yeah. It was the show that got canceled I had on Comedy Central. Yeah, and it was just like, and it was like, um, let's don't say cancel, it ran its course. Cancel is an ugly word. Just say ran its course. course. So, you know, I was going to be a guest on the show, right? (laughs) And then, like, everybody else, and I'm like, I know I'm fucking know these niggas know me. Soon, soon as I walk in, they like, oh shit, that's him. I'm like, what up, nigga? What you? So I already know they're gonna get it popping, right? <laughs> so they, they gave it to the other dude. They say, give it up for so and so. He's a quarter spot. They was like this, right? And then they say, give it up for Tiffany. They did, right? So I know. I said, if they got, and the other person got, I'm about to get woo 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 woo, right? I'm just knowing they about to go crazy. And she learned what the fuck you want. He said, Donnell Rollins. <laughs> Why are you and mad at me? Nobody clapped. Why are you mad at me? Because the audience didn't give you no, no love. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you mad at me? Because the audience wasn't fucking with you. <laughs> you won them over eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you did. They Yo, just wasn't then, with you in the and beginning. Then his face was like this. This is where you know the nigga got some sinister shit by the pop. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looked like his face get contoured. He can't. He can't. He get contoured. <laughs> Yo, when he about to do some diabolical shit, watch it from now on. When his face get contoured. He do like this. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. This, look, this when he about to get disrespectful, son. It's like this. It's like this. <laughs> right here. That's when the bullshit about to happen. Right here. When he contoured his face. Why I are you mad at me? Because the audience didn't fuck with you in the beginning. You won them over eventually. Because you started it. It's not true. Let's, let's face some pins. It's not true. Rocket Cut money. It. Salute to rocket money. Uh, I've always struggled with finding time to manage my finances. At the end of a busy week, the last thing I want to do is spend time budgeting all of my expenses or tracking down customer service teams to cancel old subscriptions I no longer use. But now... We all use Rocket Money, okay? And it does all of that work for us. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings, okay? With Rocket Money, we have full control over our subscriptions and a clear view of our expenses. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with just a few taps, okay? I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they'll help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lowering your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you, okay? Rocket Money has over 5 million users and it saved a total of 500 million, a half a billy in canceled subscriptions, savings, members, and it saves members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features, okay? Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. That's rocketmoney.com slash idiots, rocketmoney.com slash idiots. We got another one, Taylor Gang. Also, this episode is brought to you by Priceline. When it comes to travel, we all have that happy place, whether it's the beach, ski slopes, couples, getaways, or even a visit to the best friend that you haven't seen in too long. And Priceline wants you to get there for a happy price so you never have to miss a trip. My happy place, my personally, man, that is actually a phenomenal question. Hey, it's with my it's with my daughter, bro. So I'm to you a dilf. I'm a dilf, man. I'm a dilf. But one day, my daughter's going to go, go on some bougie vacations. I'm sure maybe she wants to hit the Amalfi Coast, and Priceline is going to make that happen. Now, thanks to Priceline's VIP family feature, you can go to your happy place more often while earning deals up to five times faster with a group. When one person from the squad travels, everyone gets more deals, and you even get to choose your crew. It doesn't have to be your actual family. It could be your neighbor, your roommate, your mailman, anyone. The more you travel, the more you save. For me, I'm choosing... Man, uh, I I want to I want to check out Turks, man. You're gonna make this little uh, family VIP situation going. I'm gonna maybe do it. I'm gonna not have comedians go. I'm gonna bring the boys from high school. The boys from high school are gonna be part of my VIP family. I'm bringing their asses with me. So download the Priceline app today. Save up to sixty percent off. Select hotels and go to your happy price with Priceline. All right, let's get back to the show. Church announcement, show C. Yo, um. We just announced, I think it should be up for sale now. If not, you can use the uh, pre-sale code uh, Staple Center or Crypto or whatever it's called. 
Crypto Arena. Ooh. Shane Gillis and I are going to be doing that um, May 9th. So those are those are on sale right now. Um, Shane is fucking hilarious, man. Go check out his special on Netflix. And uh, he got a new show that's also coming out on Netflix as well. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for that one, man. Salute to I'm Shane. Excited about- I, I thought it was interesting how... Um- Cause I watched him and I enjoyed the monologue he did, but I yeah, saw yeah, just hosted SNL. You guys know who Shane is. Yeah. I saw all the outlets. Is that part of Netflix? Um, the yes. Netflix yeah, yeah. Festival. I saw the outlets giving him it's shit. It's so funny because I have a show doing that festival also. What's festival? Well, tell them about the it. Netflix. Uh, the crypto Netflix is special. the uh, is the presale code. I don't know when don't this is out, but go. I don't want to. I don't. You got to show the crypto arena. I don't even, after you said, I only want to say where my show is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not at the crypto arena. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, his thing hits up in the crypto room. I'm like, I'll be at the bourbon room on Hollywood and Kalinga. <laughs> That's what you have for real? Oh shit, I'm in a spot. I think it is a bourbon. The bourbon room, it's a it's a it's a very small venue, but I still get some of the placement or whatever, but that's part of the um uh, Netflix is a joke special. We're all and pulling up. That's the is a joke up. part. Yeah, and you know Damn, bro. Netflix. <laughs> Damn, bro. Netflix is a joke. The yeah. festival. Uh, May the sixth. Who's on the show with you? Me and then open it. This is my show. But it's not a big show, it's a small show. But I'm gonna tell you, this is so funny because Netflix is so powerful. It just killed another festival. Which what one? JFL? Mean? Montreal, JFL. Wow. Is it Netflix? Just did for laughs? Nef- Netflix didn't do it. But because that festival's so popping. And it, but you know, and as many years, I tell people all the time, Nef- um, the JFL festival, and this is when people be talking about people plants and all that type of shit, is that that used to be the festival that broke people. Yeah. Back in the day, that's it broke. Um, it broke uh, Monique. It broke Kevin. It broke Dave. That was back in the day, like early. Just the t- last broke Dave. Yeah. There was a version of it in Aspen, broke, right? Well, yeah, Aspen, but that was just. It was nothing was like Montreal. Montreal is the huge one, and this is where people go out to see new talent. This is before there was. We did it one year. You had a nasty show, yeah. yeah. And uh, that was fun. It was a lot. That, of fun. Was, that was fun. Yeah. So we did a, but yeah. So basically, what happens is before there was you know comedy on the internet. Before there was like clips and YouTube. There was no real way for these execs to go see talent. So all the talent would go there. The young talent would go there, and then people would get fucking uh, deals. They would. I, yeah. I, I'm sorry, and I was no, a part. No, the internet killed just for last. Then you're yeah. right. I didn't even think about that. But that's where everybody used to go. Well, yeah. the internet has something to do with it. But back in then, it was just like back then. It was just Montreal Comedy Festival, and it was the most coveted audition yeah. to get. Yeah. Everybody was like this. Didn't you do it last year? I did it last year. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you keep Larry on doing, doing it. That. But yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the new faces was the thing where you would get new these fa- deals. There, there was yeah. two. The, the, the biggest one you had your gallows, of course. Yeah. Then you had new faces. Then the other one was the uptown. New these are uptown show. Yeah. The nasty show with new faces. And when I tell you, like now the industry don't go to any showcases. Everybody, everybody was there, and you have you could Tim Allen got broke off in here. He did a he had a fucking 18 minute set and it was around I we wired it and they saw something. Kevin Hart had his set. Dave Monique did an uptown and that that at that festival then when you go there, you could you could go there as like a struggling comic and you would leave there with a quarter million dollars with them nothing to do with you, just a holding deal. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just like people was like the deals it was crazy. Were crazy. It was and, crazy. And the, the deal is like maybe you guys develop a sitcom. If you don't, you but keep we don't all want nobody money. else to fuck with you for exactly. a year. Exactly. Yeah, That's yeah. what it was. They're yeah. paying you for nobody else to have the rights to your stuff. And this is back in the day when like it was every every com not every but a lot of like you know marquee comics were getting these deals and maybe they wouldn't even have shows but they would live off the deals. Yeah. Like that was how you made your money. Yep. Because it wasn't like and I you know. I am an older guy, been doing it for a while. I don't knock anybody hustle. I say, you got some old heads out here, be like, and then YouTube, I'm like, man, the fact that you have the tools oh, to so much say, better. Like, the fact that you have the tools to blow yourself control up. Control your own yeah. destiny, fuck and, that. And when it comes down to. And if you're a comic that got like really raunchy dark comedy, you can just set up your own platform. That's it. 5150, kill this shit. Yeah, and then sure. you get fucking 400 people to watch that shit. Listen, why he started it. Stop saying, hold on. He started it. Like, do, do you have church announcements? Can I tell you something? Do you have church announcements? I ain't got a church announcement. You know what? Without that, it's a, you know who. You got shows coming up. I got, I got shows. I just want to say this. <laughs> you know the people, the per- you know who called me? You know what? And I'm going to, this is going. This is my last thought on that. Yeah. You know, the most calls I got was from other comedians. You know what they said? Thank you. They don't got the heart to say that they self, though. I do. Because they know Corey Holcomb will come out. <laughs> Stop playing with Corey, Donnell. Yeah, okay, Corey. Okay? 
<laughs> and I want to say shout Yo, out to I Shane Gillis because Shane Gillis did that monologue and people were trying to give him bad reviews he had to know he was going to get bad reviews because they hate when somebody who got cancelled uncancels their motherfucking course, self of course that's all that was but like, you yeah. had ears and here's, you watched the thing. monologue you know that he did a fantastic yes. monologue so it, yeah. but here's a strip they tried when, you, when they cancel you when they bury you they hate when you Rose from the dead, but you never were dead anyway. Exactly. Because they don't want to believe that their power is useless. That's right. They don't That's want right. to believe their power. So when That's he comes right. back and hosts the show, now they got to sit there and be like, well, how do I discredit That's this in some right. way? That's but right. Here's, here's another thing, too, is that you, like, when you have these alternate platforms, you empower yourself. There was a day when you had to go to Hollywood, but everybody's bringing Hollywood him to them. And, and you him. should use you should use the platforms. You should work with the platforms, but also do the things on your own so that you can control your destiny. Have another option. If you only have one option, you got to do what they say. If you can do something yourself, now we're negotiating. Right. That's right. Yeah. And I, um, I want to tell everybody, church announcements, Saturday, April 27th, second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival is happening in Atlanta at Pullman Yards. Everybody's been grabbing tickets. We sold out last year. We're definitely going to sell out this year. Uh, on that stage will be Wallow and Gilly. Let's go. Um, Poor Minds Podcast, Dre and Lex. Uh, Horrible Decisions, Mandy and Wheezy. We got Carefully Reckless with Jess Hilarious. Jess will be on stage uh, doing Jess Fix My Mess. Uh, Debbie Brown will be there with the Deeply Well Podcast. Black Tech Green Money. Uh, my man Will Lucas got the financial literacy covered and uh, the Ball Alert show will be on that stage. We got great panels for you that we'll be announcing soon. You know, we got the food trucks and the merchandise and all that good stuff. So go get your tickets at eventbrite.com right now. Blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. Yes, Dada. And in closing, I would like what to... We mean closing? We're not done? Oh, we got more? Yeah. Oh, that sounds like the outro. Just, no, it's huh? not the outro. Oh. <laughs> also, make sure you go pre-order my third book. It's coming. Uh, Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. It'll be out May 21st. It's available for pre-order right now everywhere you buy books. Make sure you go get uh, Alice Randall, too. Alice Randall, My Black Country. That's the next uh, release off my book imprint, Black Privilege, Simon & Schuster. She'll be out April 9th, but you can pre-order that now. I don't want y'all walking around here, you know, dressing like cowboys and cowgirls girls just because Beyonce is doing it. I want you to know something about the history of black people in country music. So go get my black country. Now, back to the show. Donnell, let's want to work through some uh, hot topics. Okay, why not? Taylor has a segment called By Any Means Necessary. Okay? Shannon Sharp, what Stop does that, that say? that podcast. No, oh. Shannon Sharp popping out. What, on the joint? I saw that. Everybody trying to, yeah, I saw that. What do you think? What does that mean, think? popping out? You'll see. Big Shannon, Big Shay Shay. <laughs> Has anybody gotten more hate in such a such a small amount of time? Wait, yeah. are people hating a... on him? Oh yeah, Shannon. I Shaw. thought he's killing it. He is. No, he's killing. But this, I'm gonna tell you. Here's the thing, with our community, Chultz, you might not know this. The bigger you are, the bigger they want to come at you and tear That's crazy you. Crazy, you said that as soon as he turned around and showed them sure. cheeks. All right, I didn't see cheeks. I just saw an athlete. <laughs> I see. An you athlete. know he used to play tight end, Donna. I know. I see, I see an athlete. Can you do your lane of comedy and I do mine? <laughs> <laughs> Your's your lies. Mine is truth. Okay. You asked me to chime in on top on this. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. And I'm trying to do it. Okay. Go on. You're looking at an athlete that's probably had fucking twenty to thirty. 20 to 30 knee surgeries, and shoulder surgeries, right. and everything. So, but again, this is an opportunity for people to go in, but I don't think that it loses to anything. Now, the color of that color of that bag might have been a little suspect. I think it's a good that, color contrast with the what's forest What's the hand green? motion? What's go, there's a lot going on here. Orange, you I don't know. I don't no, know. What is and he's walking into the store to promote his own alcohol. Let's talk about that. Right. But he don't drink. I don't know. Just something about that fluorescent color, though, son. Thanks on his pocket. Oh, I thought he said he did. Good color contrast. Yo, Shan is the man. Why are people hating on him? You think it's just success? What Donnell said is true. It's just success. It's the truth. Like, you know. The Cat Williams interview said everything Somebody off. said, after somebody, uh -huh. a friend of mine said, why are these people coming at me so hard? And what did I do to them? I said, your success is just mirroring their failures and what they didn't do. You're reminding them of what they will never yeah, achieve. yeah, yep. yeah. But I mean, it's just strange to be upset of the host of a show. It's not like it's not even like Shannon's on there giving his Negativity opinions. Negativity gives more energy than positivity. That is true. Sadly, why is that? Isn't that We're just drawn to it, man. What you say, Taylor? Isn't that contradicting what you're saying? What you mean? You're saying that they're just jealous people of like what they couldn't get. But what's comedy then? You guys make fun of people. 
Oh shit! That's I'm a good point. Kayla, <laughs> second smartest thing she said in about Shut two up. years. What's what? number one? That's great. I forgot. I had it marked though. <laughs> but we, what do you think, Donna? This is a good point. Okay. Yes. We 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 say things. In my case, we don't say things to be malicious and to hurt people. We say things you try to, to hurt me every chance you get. <laughs> don't lie. Exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> that these people, when they comment, they they're trying to hurt him. I think that when people make comments, for example, there's a video where like someone's making fun of the outfit he's wearing. Yeah. That's like, just comedy. But but notice, since it's a joke, it's not hate to me. They're just teasing. They're just making fun. There's an art to it, right? You're trying to evoke a, an emotion. When it's just people criticizing something because they're successful, then I think that's where you get into the hate category. I don't even think Shannon would find this to be hate. I think he'd just laugh at it. He I should. think he would laugh at it, but I think he probably at a point where enough is enough. Goddamn. Hmm. Well, because he is 55 years old. You know what I'm saying? So he don't want to be bothered. Right. You know what I mean? But this all comes with it. Like, there's nothing. Once you get in, in front of that camera, yeah. all bets are off. Yeah. That's the other thing. This is the price of success. Like, you got to be willing to pay it. If Yo, you don't want to pay it, then you're not going to get the success. My therapist said People that hate Taylor earlier. Swift. People hate Beyonce. They're supposed People, to. Like, what, did your, what did your therapist say? My therapist was talking to me about something and he was saying how he was saying how some people want the fame and the money and the accolades that come with being successful, but they don't want to be critiqued. Yeah. But all of that comes with That comes with it. Well, you have to be like, right now we're sitting here, people are talking about our sneakers, our outfits, our haircuts, our hairlines, lack thereof, everything. That comes with it. So is, is, if, if, is it a mental disorder if you don't want to be critiqued? No, but it's, no. It's, 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 you just can't escape it. I think it's normal to not want to be critiqued, but it is part of success. So it's accepting it. You have to. Yeah. Like if it's raining outside right now and you choose to walk out that door in the rain, you're going to get wet. Yeah. But for some reason, my God, if I go out there, he know to stop that shit. Really? Yeah. It's my but that's God. not the way the internet works. We'll see. Well, I go out there, I bet you it won't be raining. <laughs> I'm talking about the internet. I'm talking about when people have critique of you. The internet, the the internet, the internet is just so, it's a, it's, 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 we, we have a love-hate relationship with it. I don't like it at all. I mean, <laughs> there's parts of it you like. I, I deal with it because it exists. No. I really don't care for it. There's, I mean, the internet's fantastic. I don't believe that. Like you, you, want you don't an care for the internet? I it's really don't. I, you know what it is? I don't I don't care for the way I feel like, and I'm not no neuro, clearly not no neuroscientist, but it's messing with people's brains in real life to the it's, point where you be having conversations with people and you're like, why can't this person comprehend? And then soon as you talk like a hashtag... <laughs> they get it all of a sudden. Bro, you know what I noticed? This is something I was talking about this with the boys on Flagrant, but like the I the power of okay, so that, that joke with Meek, right? I I post it on, on Instagram, get like a million or two million views. On Twitter, maybe like four million views. Mm -hmm. Which is I'm very grateful everybody watching. That seems like a lot, but like when I have a clip that does a lot, it's like 20, 30, 40 million. Like it's way more than that. But once the blog started taking it and carrying say, it. Say blows. what it is. So, say what it is. No, no, I'm, I'm going I'm to get there. just the blogs. No, no, no. Wait, what else? What else? The black blogs. Oh, okay. Well, the black blogs, it doesn't matter. I, it, to me, it's just any kind of like news source. All the news sources that are in hip hop talking about it, all of a sudden it feels louder than it is. Exactly. Now, no, That's, yes. now, here's the thing. now, here's the thing. I know for a fact it's not as loud because I know the numbers. I know a clip that I posted that got 40 million views. It didn't feel as loud because all the news sources weren't covering it. It really shows the power of the blogs. It shows the power of But is of it these... power or noise? That's all no, I've been no, no, trying no. to get what people I'm saying, to understand. What I'm saying is if, if it, it's a power to convince people that something it's bigger is than what bigger it is. than what it is. Ooh, oh, yeah, that's, that's a that's power. And, and now y'all understand. Understand me. And that's that's, power. that's and all I've been trying to tell these niggas. <laughs> and that's, it took the white man to career. say it. <laughs> okay. And that's a lot of people's career. <laughs> and you know what? We used to have all that power. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a big issue with that. That's all I've been trying to tell y'all. <laughs> This y'all, that's literally what my new book is all about. Oh, really? How people make micros macros. But none of this shit really matters in the grand scheme of things. The, the, the world that y'all are fighting over is this fucking big. Mm. And then and on the flip side of that, right? And I've heard people say this. I've heard people say, 
in recent times, like in the past year, Joe Rogan's not as big as he used to be. How? Because you don't see him going viral on your algorithm every fucking but that day? But that's, that's what they're, they don't, it's like, they don't see it. It, 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 it. it shows points about numbers. When he was on Spotify, he's getting ten, he had 10 million downloads a month. And he's still number so one. Just, still number one so, in the world. So just because he's not on your algorithm doesn't oh. mean it's not happening. Oh. And then, But that's the tricky thing is our algorithms be can become so insular. So like if you're a Korean dude and you love K-pop and you love, uh, I don't know, Korean uh, horror movies and that's all you see, that's all you'll think is happening in the world. Obviously, you know other things are happening. But if there's some drama in that world, you'll hear about it. It's going to feel like the biggest thing. For us, we see this Meek Mill story. It's popping up on all the pages that we follow, et cetera. Like, yo, this is so big. But if you actually look at the numbers, it's not as big as something that didn't get picked up on any pages, but the whole world. Yeah, but you, but, but you in the streets now, son. I'm in the streets, bro. I got a chapter yeah, in, in my book. I've been the you streets. made it to the barbershops. <laughs> you know what the title? You know what? I, you know what the chapter title in my book is? Worldwide nigger net. <laughs> Okay. You love saying that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Not as much as you would like. What's to. it like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Sounds like you like saying that in public. Because it's just, but he, <laughs> so I'm glad you. But so, good, I'm dumb. glad you saw that for yourself. Because I'm telling you, it, it, we literally make these micros, macros. It's ne none but of this shit if the ever people, big. If the people feel that way, like I felt watching it, even though I had the evidence to show. I felt compelled. I was like, oh, this is a huge story, right? Mm -hmm. If everybody else feels that way, then it becomes a huge story. And then all the other vlogs or whatever are chasing the success that they see on the other ones. And then it actually can spiral into a real thing. Something that isn't real in terms of the numbers can become real yeah, because yeah, of the power yeah, yeah. of all those blogs and their ability to influence people. It's It's... Yo, it's really interesting. So why don't they amplify better things? Well, the question is... People don't react to better things. Yeah, that's the... God point. dang it. I know. People don't react and that's to positivity. On us. Right? Yo, that's on us. That's on us. Because if we reacted to the positive pieces that they made, then they would just make more positive pieces. They're no different than any of us. They want people to view the things they work on. We might disagree with the content. We might agree with the content. But they're no different than anybody else who's creating shit. How do I create shit that people see? Yeah. We controversy. Want attention. Yeah. And then controversy. I mean, every last is the year when I did my when I did my podcast run or whatever, I every place that I went, the first thing they they was like, you know, we like that controversy. They just want they want you to come in there with trigger shit. Mm. They want you to come in there. Nobody like. Like, I know that you can push that, but nobody wants an organic moment now. Yeah. No, nobody wants to, like, even Yo. this podcast, we had some moments where it's like, this wasn't like, then I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that. I, 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 yeah, I Andre Ward. To the, yeah. We had Andre Ward on Breakfast Club. Oh, shout out, man. Salute oh, to the I GOAT. Me up when I was talking about man, that shit was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but we had Andre Ward on the podcast. Ah! Andre said verbatim, I know I could come in here right now. He said, it's the Breakfast Club. I know what I can say to go viral. Mm. I know what I could say. I know who I could talk about. And I'm like, well, for the sake of the show, do it. But like, I but, saw you too. But, but, like, but just and the, I said provocateur. <laughs> <laughs> but just the fact he knew that. And listen, I'm not even going to sit here and put it all on the black blogs because that's not true. CNN, MSNBC, yeah. Fox News, they're all doing the same shit, playing the same and game. And it's coordinated. You wonder why it's nonstop Trump coverage on all these networks. And you have OGs like Mr. Clyburn saying, how come y'all don't he's on MSNBC and say MSNBC saying how come y'all don't highlight Joe Biden's record how come y'all don't highlight the things that he does because it doesn't bring the ratings the way Trumpito does That's they would rather talk about Trump sneakers all week because they know it's going to get them ratings it's going to get them clicks it's going to yep. get them engagement yep. I can talk about Biden uh, putting a cap on credit cards for eight dollars or whatever the fuck it was that came out nobody's going to care nobody cares nobody gives a hey, fuck I couldn't get him you couldn't he sent me a pair, but I'm sure worth six thousand dollars now. No, really, resale value six thousand dollars, three ninety nine flip. What else we got, Taylor? What else we got? Uh, ooh, Trump AI with black people. Can somebody do me a favor? Damn, never mind. He's sitting there. Oh fuck. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> supporters of Donald Trump created it and shared AI photos of him. See them? With the black sensors are swirling in the milk right now. Support. This is not even real. Yeah, it is. Shut up. It's AI. You know, you know what? They always try to discredit you know what? him, bro. You, they stole the election. This is how the internet is. 
It's not real, but it is real. It is real. It no, is real. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's you're not, right. but it is. You're right. You drop that, people will believe it. Absolutely. It's real. Absolutely. That is real. That's Somebody real. Somebody put Donnell Rollins on there for me. <laughs> Please, I don't know how to do AI. Why are they always <laughs> hating on Trump, man? Trump's going to be the nominee. Yeah, Nikki Haley. Yo, this motherfucker's going to win and they ain't doing nothing. They, they not, they ain't I doing don't know nothing. if he's going. Who going to beat him? Come on, bro. I know. I, I I really think it's a toss up. I really do. Just because I, I, nobody's enthused about this election. Now, do I, I think that the MAGA code but is more the, the, the reason why the reason why the reason why I think him, I think he'll win, because there's nothing that Biden is doing to get his base excited. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. This the, all, this is like a comeback fight. But but both of them have to energize those independents and those swing voters come November. Because and how's Biden going to do that? I don't know. They got. I'm, they got to figure that out. That's the biggest out. question. Yeah, so only one person that could save him, bro. Who? You Hunter? Who? No. Who? <laughs> Stop. Come on. Who? Mike, bro. Man, shut up, man. Who? <laughs> I'm about to say she says she's not running. I'm not even feeding <laughs> into this. You know what I'm saying? Who? Michelle? <laughs> Who you talking I'm about? I'm not feeding into this shit. Big oh. Mike, bro. Yeah. Big Mike. I, I man. literally started to Kill say Mike? she's not running. No, Big Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I Kill saw him Mike. just get right. Up. Kill him Mike. Mike can nah, save Big it. Mike. Big Mike can do Let, it, bro. Let's do some asking idiots, man. Show's got to be home to the baby. You got 10 minutes. Let's do some asking idiots, okay. Taylor. Okay. Somebody called the radio station this morning and said, Charlemagne, how come you don't never call out Killer Mike for having a big back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Why'd you say that? I said, he doesn't. He's <laughs> six foot four. He's lost a lot of weight. And he's. More stomach than back. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is more stomach, though. He is. The way he's that built. Mean he doesn't have He's more stomach. All right, let's take a break from this nut-ass episode to talk about DoorDash, man. DoorDash, what's happening? Uh, thank you. You know, we appreciate you so much, man. And I want everybody out there to know that if you want more from delivery, you can get it with Dash Pass by DoorDash. Dash Pass is the most affordable way to get anything in your area delivered to your door, helping you save money and time with every DoorDash order. With $0 delivery fees and lower service fees on eligible orders, Dash Pass makes it easy to save on restaurants, groceries, retail items, and all your local favorites that deliver on DoorDash. Dash Pass pays for itself in two orders on average, making delivery even more worth it. Plus, Dash Pass gives you special access to exclusive promotions and member-only menu items, all for only $9.99 a month. Get more from delivery for less. Sign up for Dash Pass today, only on DoorDash. Use code IDIOTS24 and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. That's code IDIOTS24 for 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. And I got to salute Squarespace, man. Squarespace, thank you for holding down the brilliant idiots all these years, man. We really, really, really appreciate you supporting us, not just this week, but, you know, many, 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 many weeks prior to this, man. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. Upload, organize, and access all your content from and access all your content from one place. With the new asset library, you're able to manage all your files from one central hub and use them across the Squarespace platform. Get started with one of our professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. Then customize your look, update content, and add features that fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every device. Use insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits and sales are coming from, and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's get back to the show. All right, what, what do I ask? What we got for asking idiots, well, first Taylor? You do it. Taylor, ask an idiot. Donald, this is a segment where we ask answer audience questions. Okay. Oh wow, here's one. <laughs> How the fuck they knew Donnell was here? Abaka Seven says, "Who has a bigger dome, Charla or Donnell? The one on top or or underneath?" Oh, <laughs> I got a big head. <laughs> Yeah, I Donna, I'm not. Donna got a lot more skull than I do. Who do you think's got a bigger peepee, though? So oh. here's a go. 
Here it goes. You couldn't. See, here you go. <laughs> now I got to yo. Who does have and a this, bigger pee You know what? And but just is, who has a bigger pee That's and this, all I want to know. And this is how. This but is why is that gay? To just If you guys just measured him. And then you don't think that's gay? <laughs> well, only if you measure him with a guy's See, mouth. 50? 50? 50? <laughs> See what you did? You gave him the courage. I'm just saying. To try to have a dick off. A dick, dick off, off, yeah. You guys can measure him with a girl's vagina. Your logo is a dick. I'm what? I don't understand why you get so upset when your logo is a dick. Your, your logo no, is a, a dick? No, it's a microphone. No, it's not. It's a D and it's an R and it's a dick right <laughs> in the middle of it. Listen, <laughs> Ozu, Ozu Nataro says, why does Donnell dress like that? All that money and he's wearing J.C. Penny clothes. Man, that's not I right. like this fit, though. Yeah, it's fire. <laughs> and what's wrong with JCPenney? It's affordable, it's frugal. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with that? I don't even want to do the fit check. I'll just, for somebody, uh, enjoy your um, your, your your white tee. Good. <laughs> Amart4 says, why is Charlotte sitting so far from Donnell? I am? I'm not sitting far from you. Like, we can touch knees. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, shit. Now we got somewhere. Now we got somewhere. <laughs> you got excited. Nice like this. <laughs> Wish that rain jobs would fall. Hey, Damn. yo. It up, that's son. crazy. Hey, yo. A man touches your knee with yo. his leg, and that's what you say? That's nothing. You know what the that rain's song's about fall? nothing. That's romantic. That song is about bro. nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Donnell, you can answer this. Does Charlamagne, Dave... you truly have too many white friends. Does Dave... <laughs> <laughs> you hit your minimum. I mean, this... Yo, wait they gotta have a minute. fun, Donnell. Wait, I know. Fun. All right. right. You just got to tell them no. Does Dave... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, Donnell. This year showed us it you, might be us we got to tell them no. You got to tell them no. <laughs> Listen, you got to tell them no. Uh, Oscar Sa Savage on him. Oh, this is good. Uh, Mount Rushmore of comedy and radio. Ooh. Who's that? What is that? What? I don't what's know. What's Mount Rushmore of comedy and radio. Yeah, what's Donnell, you are very equipped to answer this question because you've done, you do both. You did comedy. My, my, I mean, you do my, comedy and you've done, you've done radio. My, Mount, Mount Rushmore, that goes, that's a lot. It's just four and four. Four comedy, four radio. Yeah. Uh, Tom Joyner. Yes. Okay. Um, Big Boy. Okay. Okay. Um, Breakfast Club. Damn. In a short period of time, um, um, do I want to say this might want, not, might not be one people appreciate, but Russ Parr. Salute to Russ Parr. I'm no not Howard. Are. No Howard, huh? No Howard. What? Stern. Stern. Can I get my Rushmore? This is a black mountain. Do your white mountain over there. <laughs> what about <laughs> <laughs> go? What about comedy? Mount Rushmore. That's so subjective. This gets you in, um, uh, that's a, I, that's a tough question. That's a tough one. It's tough. Richard Pryor. Yeah. Um, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Um, Eddie Murphy. Mm. And, uh, a stand-up, uh, Chris Rock. I'm not Ooh. mad at that. Schultz, what you got? Mount radio. Rushmore. And now when I say radio. that, when I'm talking about body of work, what their impact yeah, has been on course. comedy and the world. Okay, radio, uh, Howard, Sharla. Um, I like Big Boy. I, like I Big really Boy. like Big Boy. I'm not mad at Big Boy. I, like, did I not say Big Boy? No, you did. You okay. did. You did. I really like Big Boy. And then, um, hmm, mm, mm, mm. what'd you say? Wow, Wendy. I, I No, you know what? Yeah, not Wendy. Not Wendy for me. Uh, I just didn't listen to her. I didn't. I didn't really listen to her. Wow, this is this is tricky. This is tricky. This is tricky. Um, hmm. Yo, who is the? Hmm. Man, that this is tough. This is this is tough. Yeah, you three, and I'm trying to think if there's like a. There's a sports radio guy that oh Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Oh, that's a good one. Because Stephen A. is is that's a good one. Is radio that's a good one? Okay. Who and you got then, comedy. Uh, Patrice, uh, Chris, Rock, Dave, and uh, man, it's it's Eddie, and then I want to honorable mention Daniel Tosh. Ooh. But those are my. Those are my, that's, that's Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore comedy, I got uh, Chris Rock, 
Um, George Carlin. Um, Chris Rock, George Carlin. Damn, it's crazy. I didn't. I didn't grow up watching Pryor. That's the thing. I watched Eddie first. Me neither. I, I, so I, it Eddie, was like I got Eddie. Chris Rock, George Carlin, Eddie. I don't know who the fourth one would be though. I got Chris Rock, Carlin, and Eddie. I don't know who the fourth would be. I really don't. Give me five more years. Five more years. I mean, see, that's the problem, right? Everybody that I really, really like is from this new era. And it, yeah. And so it's like everybody's still growing. So you don't want to put, even you, Donna, you don't want to put y'all on the Mount, the Mount Rushmore. Yet. Yeah, I don't even care about that. You know? Um, so I, I got to stick with three for radio for me. It's Tom Joyner, Howard Stern, um, PD Green. Wendy Williams, honorable mention, uh, Angie Martinez. Yo, um, Angie's one, too, that I... Goat. Yeah, Angie's goat. one, too. Goat. Okay, final question. Uh, Donnell, between Charlemagne, Andrew, and DJ Envy, <laughs> who would you fuck, marry, or kill? <laughs> Are you going to take my present? Thank y'all for having me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> no? Is that the end of it? That was the one. You don't one. want to answer the question? That was the one. Go <laughs> see. That go, was the one. Go see a new day on Netflix That's right it. now. Like, go go check watch out. a new day. Thank Donnell's you. Was a new day. Thank you. How do you not want to play? Oh, congratulations oh, on the oh, baby, oh, son. Oh, congratulations. The top, the top, Donnell. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Took my gift. Took my candle, bro. <laughs> As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.